Hey everybody, this is Lance at tipsforrealestatephotography.com and today I'm gonna share some information about processing interiors for real estate photography utilizing a piece of software called Photomatix. Photomatix is great for HDR photos and it's a great way to process interiors for real estate photography quickly and efficiently with some decent results. Now, the main focus of this tutorial is gonna to be to show the workflow with Photomatix and Lightroom. Uh, I'm not gonna be spending a whole lot of time on going through the different presets and settings that I'm using in each piece of software. However, I will put screenshots and further info on my blog regarding what settings I actually use. So please, after the video, go to the blog to get all of the specific information. Now there are a couple of other things that you can find either on my blog or on my YouTube channel such as file management. So if you need to figure out how to organize your photo shoots, please go through my blog and look up some file management stuff. And also you can look up my Infuse tutorial which shows how I process interior photos with the program Infuse and utilizing a plugin directly in Lightroom. But today let's talk about Photomatix. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Lightroom and we're going to create a new catalog for our photo shoot and we are going to import our photos. So we're going to go to import. We're going to find our photos in whatever folder we put them in and we are going to click on develop settings, go to user presets and select auto lens profile. All this is doing is it is setting the profile of the lens. So when we import the photos, it automatically adjusts a couple of minor things for each photo based off the lens and camera that we're using. This is completely automatic through Lightroom and that auto lens profile develop setting can be created by you um, before you import things. So then it will show up here under develop settings like I have selected. For metadata, I select UEP because that is the uh, copyright information and um, my name and my company that I apply to all of my photos. So it just makes it quick to be able to do this on import. Go ahead and click import. And the main thing that we're gonna do by bringing the photos into Lightroom before we put them into Photomatix is we are actually gonna correct the white balance of all of our bracketing shots. So. Let's go through each bracketing shot and I'm only gonna go, uh, go through a couple just so we can see here on um, what we're doing. But we're gonna go ahead and select our brightest image and hold shift and click on our darkest image so we have all of them selected for that particular bracket. Click on the develop module. And once that pops up, we are going to change the white balance. So I'm actually going to select the second exp second highest um, exposure here in my bracketed list, just so it's a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna click on the wand tool to select a particular white balance. And I'm gonna find something that I know is gonna be neutral or white in the photo. And I'm gonna click it. And then based off of just my eye, I'm gonna make any minor adjustments that I think I might need to make. Just that I want to do, um, I do have my monitor calibrated, so I'm relying on my visuals to make any adjustments that I see necessary. Make sure when you do this, you have this button down in the bottom left, or excuse me, the bottom right selected that is called auto sync. If you don't have that selected, and if it just says sync, the adjustments that you make will not be applied to all of the bracketed images that you have selected. So go ahead and make sure you flip that switch so it shows auto sync. So then whenever you make an adjustment, it's gonna cascade throughout. Go ahead and go through all of your bracketed image images to make the particular white balance adjustments that you need to make. And this is also a good time to make any specific color changes for specific parts of an image. For instance, if you have a bathroom showing that has a different color temperature than the bedroom, it's a good time to go ahead and use the adjustment brush to go ahead and, and fill in that particular area with the correct white balance instead of relying on doing that to the completed blended image outside of or after we've run it through Photomatix. We wanna get the colors right as close as possible before we blend everything together to get the most optimal result. 
One other thing you can potentially do at this step is make any small cloning decisions that you need. So for instance, if you have a spot on the wall, um, for instance, if you have uh, some lens dust um, or some sensor dust and you have a spot on one of your images that you know shouldn't be there, you can go ahead and remove those at this time. But any big items like uh, removing yourself from mirrors in bathrooms, I would wait until after we've run them through Photomatix before you go ahead and uh, make those adjustments. We'll do those in Photoshop later. I'm gonna go through here and adjust all the white balance for all the rest of my bracketed shots, and I'll catch back up with you shortly. Okay, so once you have all your white balance adjustments made, we are going to select all of our photos in our library, and we are going to export. So we're gonna to go to File, Export, and we are gonna export full JPEGs of these particular images, and we are gonna put them in a subfolder and I'm going to label it full JPEG I for interior. I'm going to choose a location to be inside of the library directory that we selected and my custom file naming settings are just going to be numbered from one until whenever um, however many photos we have. Our image format is JPEG, our quality is going to be at 100% and I'm not going to resize or sharpen uh, any of the photos. And I'm gonna click export. This is probably gonna be the longest part of the process other than adjusting the white balance. Once we get into photo Photomatix, we'll see that that actually goes really quick. Okay, once the export is complete, we are going to go ahead and open up Photomatix Pro. And we're actually going to click on, up at the top, click on automate and batch bracketed photos, and that will bring up this window right here. Now for preset, we're gonna use UEP Interior, which is a preset I made that I'm going to be applying to all of these bracketed photos that we're going to uh, bunch together or batch together with Photomatix. I will place the, the specific settings of that preset on the blog, so make sure to go check it out because that's a really important step to this process to make sure you have it set right and that it's gonna process how you want for real estate interior photos. Down underneath where it says process three images at a time, if you take seven bracketed shots or five or however many you take and you take those that same amount of number for every single shot, then go ahead and select whatever value that is um, in this particular box. Otherwise, I would suggest clicking on advanced selection and going to options and then where it says bracketed sets may have an even number of frames, select that and then choose your range of how many bracketed shots you think you might have. So I would normally choose between three and seven and that will cover for those times that I might take seven shots but I delete one for whatever reason. So then if there are six, for instance, it will pick it up. So we're gonna select OK, and then we're gonna choose our source folder. So we're gonna to go to our folder that we exported all of our JPEGs to, full JPEG I, click Select, and then we're going to hop over to the right, and we're gonna select a custom location. So we're gonna select Choose Location, and by default, it's gonna put you inside of your full JPEG I directory. So we're gonna back out of that, and then we're gonna create a new folder and just label it edited because these are gonna be the pictures that are gonna have been, proce been processed through Photomatix. You can leave everything else the same and you don't need to go into naming, resizing, and finishing. You can just leave that all at default and select run. And we'll see here that it's gonna load up our various bracketed sets and process them. Each one is only gonna take maybe about 10 seconds or so. It's actually really, really quick. So we will see you over here and we'll go over importing into Lightroom once they're all done being processed with Photomatix here in a second. Once Photomatix is finished processing the bracketed shots, we're gonna import them into Lightroom and make our final adjustments. You have to remember that when Photomatix processes the pictures, they're coming up with a baseline that is going to be a general accepted, I guess, edit of the picture. It's normally, for my taste, it's extremely dark and it doesn't look good. But once we import them into Lightroom, we can make the adjustments that we need to get it to where we want it to be. 
So we're going to go back to import and we are going to find our edited directory of where our photos are after Photomatics was done making adjustments to them. And we are going to import using a user preset called Photomatics Interior. And again, I will go through and show on my blog the exact settings and stuff that I have made to make this particular develop setting work correctly and fits to my taste. You'll be able to make adjustments to your taste depending on what you want your final result to look like. So I'm gonna click import. And instead of selecting previous import up here, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on edited down below. So I'm in my edit folder. If we look at this on, um, on the screen, we can see here that it's a pretty decent result. And let's go ahead and go over to the develop module so you can see a little bit about what was done upon the import with that Photomatics interior preset. We can see here that our exposure was increased by 1.20, quite a bit. Uh, I increased the contrast just a tad. I took away a lot of highlights and added quite a bit of shadows, and I added some clarity. You'll notice that the exposure is really high because, like I said earlier, when Photomatics gets done with the picture, it's going to look really dark. We can go ahead and click on Reset so you can see what it comes out from directly from Photomatics. So this is what it looks like. So now if we go back to our particular preset and we apply it, we can see the difference on, on what we've done. Now I usually boost up the contrast just a little bit more and just make any adjustments that I see um, that I might need to make, whether it's with white balance and adjusting the color temperature. Um, I don't like in this particular shot how much blue there is. That seems to always be a problem with blending shots together using software like Infuse and Photomatics. So this particular room doesn't have any blue in it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to saturation and drop my blue down just so it's not as striking when I look at this image. Um, otherwise, it looks pretty good to my taste. So again, you'll have to go through and, and create your own preset that's gonna guide you into the right result that you wanna deliver to your clients. It may look like something you see on the screen right now that I would deliver, and it may not, and that's perfectly fine. That's, the, that's one of the um, powerful things about being a photographer is at this stage, you can do whatever you want to enhance your photo to make it match your style and the type of product that you wanna deliver to your client. Now, as a bonus, Photomatics was generous enough to provide me with a 15% off coupon that I get to share with you for when you purchase um, Photomatics. Photomatics is, I believe Photomatics Pro is 99 bucks. Extremely worth it. Um, this, If you're doing real estate photography, one real estate photography shoot should be more than what the cost is of Photomatics. So it's a no brainer to purchase it if it's something that's gonna help out your business and help you get the result that you need for your real estate agent clients. And I would love to share the 15% off with you. So head on over to the blog, read more about all the details, about the settings, the different presets, see all the screenshots, and make sure you look for that 15% off code. So when you go ahead and purchase Photomatics, you can get it for cheaper than I did. Hope this was helpful to you, and make sure, again, you go over and check out the blog at tipsforrealestatephotography.com. Take care.